What is up y'all, Scott here. Today we're talking about field monitors for filming with the GH5 and other mirrorless cameras. So the main reason we're using field monitors is to have a bigger screen so that we can check our focus and our composition easier. The little screen that's on most mirrorless cameras is just too small to do detailed focus work for filmmaking when you're using manual focus for most of your projects. Most field monitors that we'll be looking at are gonna be in the five inch range. There are some seven inch field monitors that are great as well. Anything beyond seven inch starts to become more like a director's monitor and not something that you would mount to your camera directly. Um, but there's a whole great set of large field monitors that you might wanna consider for other purposes. There's a number of features that I'm looking for in a field monitor to decide if it's gonna be useful for me. The biggest one is focus assist tools. So the GH5 has a focus peaking function built in where it highlights the in focus parts of the image with a color to help you know where your focus plane lies. However, I don't find the function on the GH5 actually works that great. It's not super easy to read. So having a monitor that has built in focus peaking is really helpful. Uh, in addition to that, having exposure assist tools like waveforms, false color, things like that are super great for figuring out if your image is correctly exposed. Again, the GH5 has some of these functions, but I find them a little bit easier to use on a field monitor. Uh, one thing that I've come to really like on a monitor is the ability to have a DC out port so you can power your camera with a dummy battery off of the L-series battery that's powering the monitor. It just streamlines my entire workflow. I can carry just one big battery like this. This thing has about the same amount of power as three or four GH5 batteries and it just makes the setup super simple. Sometimes when you rig out your, your camera, you actually can't access the battery port very easily and this put your battery right on the top of the monitor, really easy to access if you need to change it. Another thing that's great to have on a monitor is an intuitive, easy to navigate menu system. I really love when there's a touch screen and I can just swipe through menu options to get to what I'm looking for. We don't want the monitor to become a hindrance on a workday that slows us down. We want it to just flow into our setup and work as we'd expect it to. A couple other things to keep in mind, a monitor that's really bright is super helpful when you're shooting outdoors. You can get shields for the screen that help protect it from the sun so you can see what you're doing, but if you have a really bright monitor to begin with, uh, it kind of eliminates that issue. One other thing you might wanna consider when looking at a field monitor is if you need a field recorder. This will unlock the abilities of the GH5 to record into 4K 60p 10-bit and then you'll be working in a codec like ProRes that's much easier to deal with in post and give you a whole lot more bandwidth when you're color grading your footage because you'll have a lot more data to work with. So with those different features laid out, we're going to look at three different field monitors today, all of which I've used and two of which I still have in my setup. They'll all be linked in the description below. They are affiliate links. If you choose to purchase a product through those links, I'll just get a small commission, full disclaimer. The companies have not paid me anything to say anything in this video. The first monitor we will be looking at is the Feel World Master MA5. This is the cheapest monitor of the three. It comes in at about $250 Canadian. What I really love about this guy is that it's super light, super small, really good little footprint to fit in a backpack. It has a bright screen and comes with a shield to block the sun, uh, runs on Sony L-series batteries and can power your camera, which is really great. It comes with this hot shoe mount, allows you to attach this onto the top of your camera and swivel the monitor up and down, which is really great. One thing that is a bit of a pro and a con about this monitor is it's cheap. So it's nice and small, and so I can throw it in my bag really easy, bring it hiking, bring it camping, not be super worried about damaging it because it's not a huge investment. I did use it at a music festival, and it was raining a little bit, not so much that I felt like I should put my gear away, but some water accumulated right around the edge of the screen here, and over time that water actually seeped under the plastic screen or the glass screen, whatever it is, uh, and it, it started to actually cause some water damage on the screen. So I don't use this monitor when I'm working with clients because you can actually see that water damage and people become worried that it's actually in the footage and it just doesn't look that professional. Other than that, the biggest negative thing about this monitor is it is not a touch screen and the menus are super cumbersome to navigate. Uh, you've got these buttons across the top of the screen here and those allow you to adjust all your settings. There are two buttons that hold a preset function. So for me, I've set this to false color and focus assist 
And I find these are the only two functions I end up using on the monitor because they're easy to access. Everything else feels buried in a menu that I don't want to have to work my way to um, when I need that function. So this is something to be aware of with this monitor. The next monitor we're going to talk about is one that I don't own, but I've used a fair amount. It is the Small HD Focus. This one comes in at about $650 Canadian and has a lot of the same functionality as the Field World Master monitor. It just has a slight increase in quality. The build quality feels a little bit better, and the biggest feature improvement is that it has a touch screen and an easy to use navigation system. Within the operating system on this monitor, you can actually set different screens that they call pages that have customized features on them. So you might have a page that's all exposure tools, and then you can swipe to the next page and maybe that's all focus tools. So you can easily move through the different pieces that you might wanna use on a regular basis. The other really nice thing about this that the Feel World doesn't offer is the ability to rotate the screen 180 degrees pointed towards you if you were to be vlogging with the camera and it automatically rotates the, uh, the view that you're seeing, it inverts it so that you can be looking at yourself right side up. If you did this with the Feel World Master, you would be upside down when you were looking at yourself. So still offers all those exposure tools and focus tools, powers your camera, comes with a mount. It's a, it's a great tool but it starts to come into that price point where you might question, is, is it the best choice or should you just save a little bit more and get something with more functionality? And that's where the final piece comes in. This is the Atomus Ninja 5. Uh, this one comes in at about $920. It is also a recorder though. And so if you want to record with this, you need to spend an additional $150, $200 for an SSD hard drive that you can plug into the back to be able to record your footage. So a big price jump from the $650 of the small HD, but we get a couple things that are really nice that, that warrant that jump. First of all, the recorder. With the recording functionality, as I said earlier, we can record 10-bit 60p 4K footage and put all that into ProRes, making the editing process a whole lot easier and that footage will just be beautiful quality. Those functions alone make this monitor worth that extra money for me. And not to mention the menus on this and the focus and exposure assist tools are really, really good. So I find that when I wanna to get to something, I just am swiping through the menus really quickly, boom, I know what I want and it's great. With all those functions, you might think, why would I not buy this? There's actually a lot of things about this monitor that frustrate me a little bit. Uh, first off, it's heavy and it's big. When you compare it to the Feel World, you can see they're, they're quite different in size and thickness. I don't really love to put this one in a backpack if I'm going on a hike just because it weighs that much extra. You add the SSD onto that and it even weighs more. That comes you know, with a higher build quality. We're looking at a metal body here, which is really nice, a bit more durable in that way. Another thing that's a real frustration for me with this monitor is it doesn't have a DC out for hooking your camera up with a dummy battery to power it off the uh, L-series battery that's on this. Uh, they do offer uh, an expansion port with inside the, the battery port that they have different accessories that are coming out. And my hope is, is that they will make an accessory that will allow us to hook a battery onto this and plug it into our camera because all the other monitors can do it. I don't see why this monitor wouldn't be capable of that. The battery is actually offset on this so they can allow for the SSD to be plugged in. When you put that big battery in there, it actually sets your rig's balance off a little bit. So it always kind of wants to tip to one side. So it's nice when that battery is center located, but not really possible with this particular uh, functionality of having an SSD plugged into this. The one other thing about the Ninja 5 that I don't love is it doesn't come with any kind of mount. You just get the monitor. If you want to be able to connect it to your camera, you're either going to have to buy some sort of a little ball mount or what I've opted for is this small rig uh, NATO mount. So this will just clamp onto a NATO rail that you can mount to a cage on your camera. And this thing swivels back and forth and just there's a little clamp here to clamp it on and off. I actually use this on all my monitors because I find that this one is just a little bit awkward and this is a bit more compact. I'll link this one in the description below as well because it's, it's a really nice piece of equipment. I like that a lot. One thing you might have heard about the Ninja 5 is that it has a loud fan, and it's pretty true. If you have a camera-mounted microphone, you have to be really careful where you put that so that it's not sitting right next to where that fan is exhausting the heat generated by the monitor. 
not a big make or break thing, but something to just be aware of depending on the type of rig that you're trying to put together. So those are the three monitors, three different price points. It just depends what you really need to do at the end of the day. I've opted to use the Feel World Master MA5 and the Atomos Ninja 5. These two monitors offer me both ends of the spectrum. I have something that's cheap that I'm not as worried about breaking and gives me most of the functionality I need. I wish it had a touch screen, but it, it does the job. Um, and then I've got the Atomos that when I have controlled situations, I know what the environmental conditions are gonna be and I want that high quality footage, I'll bring this guy out. So both are good. They just have different applications in my setup. These are just a few of the monitors you might look at when you're purchasing one for your GH5. There are lots of others out there that I'm sure are just as good, but these are ones that I've worked with and had good results with. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'd be happy to get back to you. Until the next video, get out there, make something beautiful, and I will see y'all soon. Peace.